Fest Jack Speed and Custom Shop. Well, boats inside. It's a really quick and easy mod we're doing here. Basically, I'm trying to keep it from sinking. Or actually not sinking, but swamping. There is a difference between sinking and swamping, but these boats, smaller boats, I'm not sure at what point size-wise they have to be before they're no longer mandated to have flotation foam inside them. This boat obviously is under that limit, so it is full of flotation foam. Sinking obviously is straight to the bottom. Swamping is a water line up to about here. Basically, if a boat fills a water full of flotation foam, it won't go to Davy Jones' locker. You just wish it did. Because in the end, swamp boats are recoverable and uh, usually destroyed. So with that, how do we prevent that? Well, you think, duh, it's got a bilge pump in it, right? Well, here's one of the things that illustrious Alumacraft did not think of. I don't understand why. It has a bilge pump in it. Bilge pump works just fine. You turn the switch on in the dashboard, and the bilge pump will come on. And it will gladly pump your bilge right out the side of the boat. No problem. But what if you're not on the boat? Turn the bilge pump on. What if you dock down in Key West, Florida, and you're away doing something else, and your boat's at a floating slip, and it rains? You know how many times I've had to build this thing out because of rainwater? If you've watched any of my videos, you see it seems like every time we put it in water, it's going to rain. We plan on putting a boat in the water tomorrow. It's the one day Jen has off of work, and it's a weekend. 30% chance of rain. We're still going to go. So, with that, one thing that concerned me with this boat is if I relieve it someplace in the water and it rains, or if it springs a leak, it does have a live well in it, and it does take on a little water if you leave it sit for long enough. It is aluminum, and the seals do, the seams do eventually start taking water a little bit. I noticed it does put on, it does take on water if you're running in rough water, but if you're sitting in calm, but then again, sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Local Lund dealer told me, check the live well. All the hoses to go to them from the live well could be one of them, just a loose clamp. So we'll do that. The point is, between rainwater and seawater, there has been water in the boat. But the problem is, I have to be on board to turn the bilge pump on. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire in a float switch. That float switch will turn the pump on and turn the pump off depending on the water level deep in the bilge. Now, prior to us filming this video, I already installed the float switch. I cleaned up the bottom of the hull. This boat's made out of aluminum. I cleaned out the bottom of the hull real good. And I, on one of the stringers or ribs, I glued the float switch down with an epoxy. A particular brand, I forget. They called it plastic welder. But in the end, it adheres good to ABS plastic and aluminum. So I'm gluing ABS plastic to aluminum. That seemed to be the perfect answer. So I did that yesterday, but that's all I did. Today, we're going to wire it. And the way I'm going to wire it is it's going to be straight wired right to the battery. The bilge pump will be the only thing on this boat that will bypass the master battery switch. The reason for this is if the boat's left unattended in a floating dock, it has to be able to bilge itself out. If it doesn't, it sinks. There's no sense in worrying about if the engine will start. No sense in worrying about it, my GPS or the fish finder turns on. If it's up to here in water, it's pretty much all garbage. So the absolute most important thing that has to be on this boat when it's left alone floating in water is the bilge pump. This way I can still turn the master, the master ignition switch off. This way I don't have to worry about if the fish finders are on, if the GPS is on, if I left the ignition turned on by accident. There's a myriad of things that could kill your battery. This way, the float switch on the bilge will be the only one that bypasses that, that master battery switch. All that's left for me to do now is wire it. So let's get to it and I'll explain how that goes. Well, I'm gonna ask you guys, leave comments if you don't mind. On some of the how-to videos and things that I've done, I've put music beds underneath me talking and explaining. Other videos I've done, I've left them completely dry. Sometimes I think the music beds might be a little loud. Other times maybe a little lower. Maybe the music bed just get rid of all together. So I've kind of done a mix of it all. This one I'm most likely going to leave dry. Let me know what you think. 
Should I put music under it? Should I not? You tell me. So here we are inside the back of the boat. I have both hatches open, and I've removed the center panel right here, which is where a seat mount goes. Looks something like this. And we'll go down in there as best as I can with the camera. You see right there is the float switch for the bilge. There's the water. That's the scuttle plug hole. You can see where the water would drain out. As you see the water rises, it turns the switch on. Water lowers. Turns it off. That's a float switch. I just glued it right in there. See if I can get a better shot of it. There's the actual bilge pump itself. Switch. That's that rib I told you about. That back there is the aerator for the live well. This is also a fishing boat, not only just a pleasure craft. And this, of course, right here underneath this dirty thing is a gas tank. So now I gotta just wire the switch in. These are the wires that go to the switch. So I just gotta figure which of these wires go to the bilge pump. All right, it wasn't terribly difficult. I isolated the wires that go to the bilge pump, which is this one right here. This is positive. I have it disconnected, but I have the switch turned on. Listen. This is the power to the bilge pump. That's the only wire we're gonna have to be routing into, is that brown one right there that I have disconnected. So it might not be obvious to some is anytime you straight wire direct to the battery you'd better be adding a fuse or you're just trading one problem for the next meaning a fire so I bought this fuse holder which will go in line you just put a automotive style fuse right in here and cover it up help keep the water out of it it is a boat after all although this is most often dry even in rain so again we're straight wiring it right to the battery which is why I'm worried about it I have to add some length to it because in the end it's going to be up underneath this cover here if I can show. I'm going to fish the wire up underneath this cover so it wraps in all neat. It's going to hook to here and be underneath and I can't slide that over if I have it short space with this little bit of wire. So I'm going to add a length to it before I go ahead and hook this up. using brown wire because that's what the factory boat well that's that's what the factory boat wiring harness uses is that brown wire so we'll try to keep it maintaining the same color code just in case somebody else other than me ever winds up working on it they may not know what it goes to or what it does that's why a little bit of wire chasing and you'll be able to find it I guess I should show this a little closer on camera. I will on the next one. Anybody that's been working on anything for any length of time would know exactly what I'm doing here and why. But not everybody on this channel would know what I'm doing, so I'll show that in a minute. I gotta make it back there.
Not much to play. So if Matt'll zoom in close. The reason why I use these is you can put a little bit of heat to it. What happens is it shrinks down. Making it almost waterproof. Certainly moisture resistant. That'll make it a lot better. So ultimately I'll back this nut off and I will attach that when the time is right. For now we're just doing the basic wiring. Once again, a little bit of heat shrink action. Some of the older ones. I think it's either a crappy brand. I mixed them all up in a bucket. It's either a crappy brand or that's an old one. Okay, I'll just pile them all up in here. So after a while, God knows how many of, how many manufacturers of those things are out there. So one of the things I really can't stand, just one of my pet peeves, is when people do a good job, but they don't make it look good either. I opened up, while I wasn't filming, I opened up this factory harness. And I ran that wire, brown wire, see it all tucked in there? Ran it up into the factory harness and the wire loom here. This way it'll run all the way to the back of the boat in a factory harness and it won't look like somebody just patched it together or laid a wire. I mean, yeah, it would work okay if you just laid the wire next to it and zip tied it to the wire, to the harness, I mean. It would look okay if you just zip tied it right to the harness how much extra is it to put a handful of zip ties on it after cutting the old ones off and run the wire in the loom? It looks factory that way. I don't know. I tend to think that's the difference between someone who takes pride in their work and people that just make it work. To each his own, I guess, right?
You left one. So this wire goes to the switch, and the other wire comes from the switch. That crimp pulled out. It's another trick I do. Is I'll double it. Bend that over. That may not work. I may just use a red connector. I'm not sure. We'll crimp it and see. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's a little wasteful wire doing like I do. Cut it, add extra wire, and then throw out the extra. But I've short I've short spaced myself before where I've made a wire harness and had it just a little short, and I gotta put another connector just to lengthen it. The less connections you have, the less likelihood of a bad connection or a failed connection later on due to corrosion. If you ever worked on semi-truck trailers through the winter here in Wisconsin, you'll find out that the baddest wire harnesses ever doesn't take long before they go bad. So you try to minimize your connections. By the way, yes, I am using flame, and yes, it is a fuel tank. This has been open and venting for well over 24 hours. In fact, yesterday I had it opened up just to dry the boat out. It was soaked. It dried out all day yesterday. It's been sitting here with the whole thing open. I'm not worried about vapors, fuel vapors. On boats, that is a big problem, fuel vapors. There might even be some YouTube videos out there of boats literally exploding. It is a problem. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to eliminate those these factory clips that hook together. I'm going to eliminate both. And we're going to double up one wire on one side of one of my connectors. Again, the idea is to eliminate bad and dirty connections. So there's no need to have this together as a harness. You'd have had to remove one pump or the other. I would still get ahead and just cut the wires and replace those connectors. Okay, so now I'll show you what I just did since Matt couldn't really see in here and film. I hooked the wire from the switch directly to the wire here, which is the same wire that goes to the bilge pump. This is the factory wire that goes to my switch. I'm going to set the phone down right here. So listen, I turn the switch on in the helm. You should be able to hear the pump. So now you see it works by the helm switch. So let's go ahead and put the fuse in the fuse holder right here now. And make sure it works that way, even with the battery switch, master battery switch here. Turn to off. Now we're going to add the fuse to here. That's a 15 amp in there. The switch regulate up to 14 it said. I just kind of worry about having 10 being too low.
now when I lift this, you should hear the pump. So now let me just package up this wiring better. And that'll be it for this mod. Now I have the wiring harness tied up a little bit better. Lift these out a little bit here. But I hung that harness coming from the aerator and the bilge pump up high to keep it clear from the float switch down here. Give it another test. And that's it. All the wires are up tucked away. These wires are back up. I tightened the positive battery terminal down with a pair of pliers, so I don't have to worry about that loosening up. Now the wiring is done. Now I just put the cover on it, and that's it. And put the top down. That was the way it went. Yep. Because you see this one here, I remember that one was mm -hmm. the one that stuck up. Alright, so give me the I'll start working on them this way. Go ahead and get the drill. Put it on this one here. Which one? That one right there. Yep. Make sure it's on Titan. It is. You didn't see. Yep. Okay, stop. We just got to start them all in. So, screw that one in, the one that's sticking up. Screw that one in. I'll start getting these finger tight. Underneath here are stainless steel Nylox nuts. Hold them down with a 3 8 wrench. Thank you for watching. As always, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I am Steve Festcheck. This is Festcheck Speed and Custom Shop. What else can I build for you?